Alright, hey guys, here's something I wasn't really expecting coming out today. As you can see, it's Next Thing Company. Uh, this is actually the chip. If you remember a long time ago, I did a video about the Kickstarter for this, and I almost completely forgot about it. They posted a few things, but ever since the Raspberry Pi Zero came out, uh, I thought they were kind of in trouble. Anyway, I'll do a full review later. For now, it's going to do an unboxing. Nice. Very nice design. Is there anything else in the packaging? I don't think so. Nope, no receipt or anything. That's fine. I don't mind. Alright, so here we go. Oh, that's nice. We got some text on the back. Uh, there's some legal stuff. Boring. Alright, we even got the chip logo on the actual packaging. Alright. I don't know if we're going to power this up. We'll see. I don't know if anything comes pre-installed. Interesting. Uh, I believe this is the same type of cable as the iPod video. I don't know if this pin layout is exactly the same. Interesting choice choosing pink. I would have preferred like black or white, just normal, not, you know, super vibrant colors. And here's the chip itself. You don't get any USB. Uh, I guess they figure you'll have some on your own. I don't think the Raspberry Pi came with any either. But then again, a Raspberry Pi didn't even come with this. So, I don't have a Raspberry Pi for comparison, but ooh, I like this. They actually have the plastic around the back so you don't have to worry about like you know static discharge on the bottom there's no gripping so it's just plastic but i really do like that design with their logo on it really cool it's something i wish the raspberry pi would have uh, the raspberry pi just has a bare circuit board on the bottom so, you know you get the grime up in there and stuff on the top you got your um pins over here your pinouts i don't remember the exact acronym for that let's try to get a nice close-up on this thing all right so here we go Again, sorry about the low light. Maybe I'll try to put, post some photos later on. I think this is for the battery right there. This looks like a power reset button. Yep. Very, very nice design. And this is just screwed in here, so I think we might be able to actually remove the plastic. And there's power, and there's the video out. There's our single USB port. Let's go ahead and boot it up. I'm sorry that I won't be able to have a video capture going because I don't actually have my capture card with me. If you want to see the pinouts, here they are. All right, there's one side. Here's the other side. All right, let's go ahead and start this thing up. So I'm going to make sure it's set to composite instead of best video. All right, there we go. I push the button. Two amp power coming from my power brick. Let's plug this thing in. I don't have a mouse or keyboard plugged in. Oh, very nice. We got two lights, and here we go. Here's the startup screen. Looks very clear on my upscaler. Also, if you want to use um, HDMI or VGA, I believe you're going to have to buy an adapter for that. If you just plug it into an upscaler, it looks just fine. The text is not blurry at all. I mean, it's a little bit blurry when it moves, but... Oh, it's a graphical user interface. All right, it says computer things at the top, and now we're seeing the chip thing. It says we're disconnected from the network. All right, this does support Bluetooth, so I might have to use a Bluetooth keyboard. I need to use a mouse and a keyboard. I don't have any USB hubs. All right, so ideally you might want to use one of these types of keyboards, keyboard and mouse combo. This actually didn't work very well on my Raspberry Pi, probably because of how much power it draws. Let's see if it works on this. Anyway, so this thing has built-in Bluetooth, has built-in Wi-Fi, making it great for this compact design. So they don't need to put an Ethernet port on there. Not best for if you want to use it for a server or anything, but great for just, you know, general use. Although I would have preferred two USB ports stacked on top of each other. There we go. Alright, so now let's go ahead and click computer things. Alright, so we got web browser, office, settings. Uh, let's go ahead and look, go to terminal. Let's see how much power this thing uses up just by itself on the interface. Uh, let's run top. By default, uh, XFCE, which is what it's running. Is only using up is using up eight percent of the CPU, six point nine. It's gone down a little bit now. 
All right. We have quite a bit of RAM left over. Oh, yeah, memory. No swap set up. So pretty interesting. All right, I don't actually have this on my Wi-Fi. Again, this has no setup whatsoever. I'm just going to go through what it has installed. Bulk rename. That's pretty interesting. Leaf pad, orange, globe time, screenshots, task manager. Let's see their graphical task manager real quick. And so far, the composite input's not bad, but I believe it was a little bit clearer on the Raspberry Pi. Not a big deal. Just something I'd point out. I don't know why. All right. Internet, we have Ice Weasel. Multimedia, we have Audio Mixer and Gnome Player. Office, ABI Word, nice to see. I haven't seen that in a while. Uh, I guess keep it low specs. They could have included LibreOffice, but ABI Word is enough to get you started. And we have quite a few network things. And we have some packages. Pack package manager stuff. All right. I mean, I know this is being upscaled, but the colors look a little bit odd. Go to... Oh, we're already over 10 minutes. All right, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm not a maker, so I can't really... The background image is 720p. I don't know. I might be just running a lower color mode just to get better performance, but I'm not sure. Um, or it could just be the theme. But yeah, so this is it running on composite. Uh, I don't believe the HDMI or VGA things are out yet. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But so far, it seems to be running pretty well. I haven't tested on a Wi-Fi with, or a Bluetooth or anything, but it's single chip, so it should be enough to at least get the job done. Um, I'm interested to see what people start doing with this. I mainly got this guy. I just thought it was cool. Uh, I don't think it's going to replace the Raspberry Pi as my main server because I'm running that as my file server slash network stuff. But anyway, pretty cool little device. Uh, just general opening of stuff seems to be pretty snappy. Uh, I'll have a link to their official webpage down below. I would really like to see what this looks like on HDMI. I'll have, to get an, I'll have to get an adapter for that. But as of now, pretty interesting. And yes, and like I said before, this does have internal storage. So I'm not sure what the process is for installing uh, other operating systems just yet. So if you want to install like XBMC or, uh, sorry, that's Kodi now, open the LKC, or you want to install like a uh, different operating system, I'm not sure what the process is just yet. Uh, starting applications for the first time is a tiny bit slow, but in general, it's, it's okay. As you can see, Wi-Fi shows up, so it's perfectly fine. It showed full signal strength. My Wi-Fi is right next to here. Um, gotta keep this under 15 minutes. Sorry, guys. Sorry for all the delays. I hope you enjoyed this quick look and unboxing of the chip. Uh, if you guys have any cool products that are easy to do, since I'm not really good at this type of stuff, just let me know, and I'll try some of them out, and maybe make some videos on them. All right, see you guys later. Bye.